not, if you just put your your foot to the floor, you can probably feel those seismic tremors coming from Nizhny Novgorod. England fans jumping up and down. They probably think they're going to win the World Cup now, Peter. It was England six, <laughs> Panama won, and uh, uh, well, England, no matter how much they, they hoped and believed today, could never imagine they would score this many. But despite the fact that they got all these goals, despite the fact that Harry Kane scored only the third hat-trick ever by an England player in a World Cup after Jeff Hurst and Gary Lineker, despite the fact Harry Kane is now leading the Golden Boot race ahead of Ronaldo, um, there's one goal that was more important than others, and it was the last one. It went to Panama. Felipe Beloy on the 78th minute. Peter, just take us through this goal and say why it's significant. Well, they, it's significant because Belgium, as it stood, they had played two games, they got six points, and their goal score was 8-2. to two. Now, at this point, England were leading the group, so they obviously playing the second game. Uh, they would get the six points, and at the time, the goal scoring was eight to one. So when Philippe Beloy scored this goal, um, it equaled them. And, and then, you know, and this is significant in terms of who's going to win the group. So who's going to play the runners-up from the from Group, uh, group H, uh, and who's going to be number two? Who's going to play the winners from Group H? So essentially, what we got is England, Belgium, level on points, level on goal difference, level on goals scored, yeah. and it then goes to bookings. Bookings, and would you believe it? They both got two yellow cards, and that's it. So they are at the moment completely all square. And let's just play with the idea that when they play in Kaliningrad. Uh, in four days time that they draw the game then it has to go to drawing lots and that has only happened once before hasn't it and your friend mr mr boban will be in boban, charge of boban, this. Yeah, boban. I, I spoke because we have one or two situations in other groups and we'll come back to that later on where it's so difficult to work out if this and that happens. Uh, so from the group yesterday, uh, where Sweden, they play Mexico in the last game, and Germany play South Korea. If Germany and Sweden win their games 1-0, Mexico, Sweden, and Germany will be exactly the same. So it goes to, well, the explanation, it goes to goal difference, goal scored, then it goes head to head, and then when all that is the same, it goes, it goes on and goes on. But uh, while we're hypothesizing, I'm just going to throw this out there because, like, like you said, if the Belgium and England are drawing and uh, they're on the same number of bookings as it stands now, at that point when they're playing, they will already know who their opponents are going to be from Group H. So uh, Martinez and Southgate will know at this situation, they may have a preference who they want to play, whoever finished first or second in the other group. They could make a tactical decision to incur a booking if they want to play the well, team the, that finished top of the other group and they're going to finish and second. The teams we're talking about are Japan, Colombia, Senegal and Poland. Uh, and just from you know a professional football player's point of view, I think preferences of playing any one of them, no, not really. But definitely I would not play Poland. Uh, only because they've got Lewandowski who's not, I mean he only played one game so far, or he's not been great in that game. But it's Lewandowski, uh, he can score. He's like Harry Kane, he can score from any situations. Uh, and, and when you get to those games, the knockout games, and I know this is a cliche, but goals are so important, you know, and you've got someone who can put them away. Um, so being up against someone who's prolific like uh, Lewandowski is, I would, I would want to avoid that. So, yes, they might have in their in their tactical thinking, someone they think they are more suitable to play against, someone they can get a better result again, against. And we might, you know, have this cynical so, uh, thought that uh, they will speculate in getting bookings. And but they don't forget they play against each other. So if they have the same preference, if they want to finish seconds in that uh, second in that group, and they're ch asking their players to get booking uh, or get yellow cards, well. They're there. They can tell their players, hey, he got a yellow card, go and get yourself one. Yeah, we could but get two teams of reserves kicking each to other say, to pieces. I know uh, Roberto Martinez and I know Gary Salsky really well, and they are not those kind of people. Okay. So we're, we're just speculating into nothing. I don't, think, I don't think any of them would be proud of saying that to their players. And I also think that they, regardless of what happens in, in the last game, that they'd be happy just to go through. Uh, and they'd be happy to play any of those four teams because they would think they have a chance.
Okay, because you talked about being afraid of prolific goal scorers. Do you know who's a prolific goal scorer? John uh, Stones. John, <laughs> John Stones. He got the opening goal in this game. Let's take you through some of the goal action. So it was the big defender who uh, got the uh, the barrage of England's uh, goals. And, and this England has worked really hard Going. on their set pieces. And the referee today was very, very uh, on to the, to the pulling down and the grabbing and the holding. And there's been a, one or two sort of situations where he stopped this corner kick from being taken and no one looked at, uh, at John Stones there. No one. He exploited the big gap because you're looking at Harry Kane and at the Harry Maguire, the two big guys, the two uh, strong, strong guys. And John Stones just exploited that space and scored and what a great header that was. And, and then we have, for me, a little bit of doubt about uh, a penalty and that's Jesse Lingard who, uh, who got the pushed or pulled down what you I don't even know to be completely honest but he got a penalty uh, and Harry Kane he stepped up and what a penalty that was and you think oh it's a bit brave Again, to, put it, to put it up there no doubts about the finish again VAR though slightly disappointing us in that we were hoping more of a contribution from them yeah I think I think what happened with VAR here is they actually checked it um, and they saw that the referee had made the right decision um, then Again, we're talking about this all the time. We are going to talk about VAR quite a lot until all the way to the end of the World Cup. Because I think that VAR will play a massive part in who wins. Uh, but it is. VAR is not bulletproof. It's still... An, uh, the, the VAR assistants and the referees, they still have to interpret the situations. And, and very few of these situations are sort of clear-cut. At least that's a benchmark if you think about what happened yeah. with Sweden and Germany yesterday. I think, what, like yeah. you've said it a couple of times, what was very clear today was that they weren't going to tolerate almost any contacts between players. And the one goal that really had no dispute about it whatsoever came in the 36th minute. This was all Jesse Lingard. And it was quite some finish. This is one where um, the keeper can do nothing but pick it out of the back of the net. And it's the first goal that England score from from open play, and it's a uh, it's it's a cracker. This is you know this is Jesse Lingard all over. This he's, got, he's done this for Manchester United on many many occasions, and he's a guy that has he's got the knack of turning up at the right time, scoring important goals. Uh, he's not everybody's favourite player. This is it's weird, but he isn't. Um, it seems like Gareth Southgate's given him a lot of attacking licence in this competition. If you get the uh, number seven jersey in the England team, that's significant. That's a very important jersey, and uh, he's, he's already been on social media saying how proud he is. But there, it also means that Gareth Southgate, he, he, he values this player, and this guy is, is, is going to start England games. Uh, simple as that. So, um, just going back to what you said, you know, who's the prolific scorer? John Stones scored again in the 40th minute, and this time I, I actually believe. Um, that this is that this is one of the best goals, or more best crafted goals that we've seen in the tournament. Clearly, of uh, the, the the training pitch, uh, the way they rolled the ball out, the cross, everyone was ready. Everyone made the right um, the right movements, and it was just very very good yeah i wonder how many times england would have to perform that to to get it to work so well during a game but today everything clicked and um, going back to the physical contact again harry kane was getting manhandled in that match against tunisia and nothing for it this time it was the opposite and uh, it, another another penalty for england so when i said before you know very brave that you put it in the top corner he just did it again. Fearless. <laughs> no, honestly, this guy, he, I am, I'm crazy about this guy. I really think that he is top, top class. He hasn't got the, uh, the personality of uh, Ronaldo or Messi or, or even Neymar. Or, he hasn't got that. He's a quiet lad. He, he gets about his business, you know, and, and he's, he kind of sort of disappears out of games. And then he's there and he puts the ball in the back of the net and he has this and I keep saying this he's got this hunger to score goals which is uh, it's incredible at the same time he's a proper team player he's physically strong enough to take part in any kind of tactics and that means pressuring the ball as well and you see him when he plays for Tottenham you see how hard he works and sometimes you know he makes I say crazy runs but they're not but crazy runs 90 meters to defend and, and I can't remember I've ever seen a player like this. And, and you know, he today uh, he sits as uh, the uh, the top scorer of this these World Cups. 
His fifth goal, though. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you know this English expression, it, it, it's better to be lucky than good. But what if you're both? Certainly, there was a lot of luck about um, this next goal for England, came on the 62nd minute. And Harry Kane can't have really known anything about Matthew this. Matthew gets a ball here and he shoots. Uh, he's actually in the way, Harry Kane, but he's in a way. Uh, in a good in a good way actually it, it hits his heel and then uh, it deflects massively and the goalkeeper's got no chance mm -hmm. this goal was also taken to VAR uh, because there's a question of of side and rightly so the goal stood that was I mean it was it, we're talking centimeters here but they, they got it right um, and with this goal Harry Kane is the top scorer of the World Cup and I'm sure I'm absolutely sure Ronaldo is sat in his hotel room angry spewing Furious, you know, and then Lukaku maybe as well because they've got four goals to their names, uh, and Harry Kane has now got five. But it, people have predicted this. People have spoken about Harry, Ga Harry Kane as a serious contender for the Golden Boot. Um, and I've got to ask you, Peter, because there's a lot of us. speculation about you know the very biggest teams in Spain wanting him after the goals we've seen, and I'm sure managers won't mind the fact that he's quite lucky as well. What kind of valuation do you put on a player like that right now? It must have gone up, and it was already high. Well, Mauricio Puccini has just signed a five-year contract with Tottenham, and the first thing he did literally the same day was make sure that Harry Kane did exactly the same so Harry Kane is now tied in to Tottenham for five more years Harry Kane for me comes across like a one club man he's very very happy where he is he knows he can perform to the highest of levels at Tottenham he's got probably one of the best managers in the world and it's really worked for Harry Kane um, I don't see him traveling abroad i don't see him being comfortable at a real madrid or a barcelona where the pressures are so different to what the pressures are in england as i said he's a quiet man he likes his uh, he likes he's not an anonymous person of course people they they recognize him in the street but he's not this guy that goes out and he's in nightclubs and he's he, he's seen in you know on as a socialized some someone who's you know in the media for anything other than football so i don't see him traveling but but if he was to be sold go on go there i i think he would be at the level of neymar the price of psg they uh, they bought um, neymar for that that's i mean for me he is he is probably the hottest property in the world he's young he's hungry he's always showed his pedigree he can score goals he can work hard technically he's, he, and tactically as well he's fantastic uh, I don't see many better players out and there. And I would say his price has gone up purely based on your appraisal of him yeah. over the last And I only minutes. take one percent, and that's a good thing. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the scene in Nizhny Novgorod must be something. You can imagine how the England fans will be. Mm. They, um, they get slightly carried away when things go well. They couldn't contain their happiness as the goals were flying in for Harry Kane and Cone.